There is nothing wrong with your internet. Do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your setting. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. Hello everyone and welcome to Sci-Fi Talk on the Fangirl Zone, a podcast where we discuss shows on the Sci-Fi and USA channels. I'm Sean Fangirl S. And I'm Steve, and tonight we'll be discussing episode one of season two of the event series, The Purge. Now, we weren't sure this was coming back. So when it actually came back, we weren't sure what to expect. Is it going to be another Purge night? Is it going to be just other people? This episode seemed really interesting because oh, absolutely. it's not what I thought we were going to have right. so far. So it should be interesting how Yeah, they're unfurled. definitely showing us a completely different side this season right because we have major like players in my mind because we have like surveillance we have people who i assume are kind of military we have somebody who looks like they may have gone dark side uh and somebody who may be hunted so it's really interesting how we're getting everything yeah but because we're doing this so early we don't have ratings yet no we don't so instead We have some news for you. Yes, we have casting news. In August, USA Network announced that Rochelle Aitz from Mistresses and Danica Yarosh, Greenhouse Academy, are set to reoccur in Season 2 of The Purge, a 10-episode TV event from Blumhouse Television and UCP based on the hit film franchise of the same name. Rochelle will play Michelle Moore, a woman who must rebuild her world after her peaceful existence is shattered when an assassin breaks into her and her husband, Marcus, played by Derek Luke, home on Purge Night. Eight starred in the ABC soap Mistresses and reoccurred on Criminal Minds and Hawaii Five-O. Her other credits include Trick or Treat, Medea's Family Reunion, White Chicks, Desperate Housewives, and Detroit 187. Danica Yarish is set to play... Kellen Stewart, a college student who tries to help her boyfriend Ben, played by Joel Allen, process the horrors he witnessed on Purge Night. Yarish was a series regular on season three of Netflix Greenhouse Academy and appeared in Jack Reacher, Never Go Back. Her TV credits also include Heroes Reborn, Law & Order, SVU, Shameless, and See Dad Run. The series, which is set in the same not-so-distant future world as the films, revolves around The Purge, a 12-hour period in which all crime, including murder, is legal. Season 2 explores how a single Purge night affects the lives of four interconnected characters over the course of the ensuing year, all inevitably leading up to the next Purge. So that's interesting. Like I said, we get all this... Yeah, that's a whole different side that the films haven't explored yet right well i think we've talked about it like i don't right. really want to know how it started which we got that in the first purge and then it came right. to this it's like okay how people act but what happens after right like, there's a hell of a lot of dead bodies it's like <laughs> why aren't people blowing stuff up we find out in this episode yeah you know there there was just a lot of things it's like huh okay i was really interested especially from the beginning so let's jump into episode one this is not a test four interconnected characters navigate the aftermath of the purge over the ensuing year okay that was pretty straightforward yeah so we open with a lady walking out on stage for an audition and she's actually reading the warning announcement for the purge the voiceover yeah but because of what's being said and how the suits in the room are reacting i'll say this seems to be taking place well before the purge ever started yes, absolutely because this was definitely a pre-purge scene 
because she's like, so what are you guys doing? Making a movie or something? You're right. And I was like, oh, my God. She doesn't even know. Now, I love nope. the fact that she's kind of this bubbly, giggly looking lady like, oh, OK, great. Yeah, I'll do this. And then when she starts, it's just boom into the voiceover. And they're all like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, Ooh, I yeah. like this one. <laughs> This is not a test. And I was like, oh, yeah. I just, I was like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So since we have so many different people, we are going to start with the bank heist group first. We see three people that seem to be in the process of robbing a bank, but not killing the guards and very specifically telling them we are not going to kill you. Right. As long as you sit still. And I'm like, okay, that's good. Yeah. And they're not spending their purge night killing, but robbing. Wonder how many they're, they've hit so far. Right. Because this in the, is in, what, the last two hours of the purge. Right. And they're not blowing anything up because we find out in one of the other scenes that class five weapons, which include bombs, are not allowed. And right. Like, Oh, okay. Well, that's why they don't just blow the vault open. Yeah. Interesting. So we have three inside and the getaway driver outside who's like, okay, is he going to be safe? Probably not. I just right. feel like they're setting that poor guy up because he, yep. he starts reporting, oh, there's a couple people coming close. Oh, well, that went from two to one because the female <laughs> apparently got mad and killed the dude. Yep. Okay. I guess you don't want to piss the people off who are with you on purge night because you never know no. when they're going to turn. <laughs> well, our leader of this little bank robbing group just keeps checking his watch. He's like, all right, 90 minutes, this much time, this much time. And they're like, yeah, we're right on time. It's fine. And they get in the vault. Great. So they're filling their bags of money. And one guy notices there's an awful lot of singles here. Yeah. Now. <laughs> and you go. Oh, I see what the banks have done. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, yeah, they got oh. smart. I just leave only ones in the bank that could be robbed on purge night. Uh, I mean, don't I'm leave sure there's anything. Some in it. bigger, but probably not anything more than like twenties. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you aren't walking out with five million dollars. You're working walking out with five thousand. Right. <laughs> And you have this other guy who's like, come on, let's get the safety deposit boxes. It's like, no, we have a schedule. We need to go. Right. And I was just like, this guy is, I don't know, he's too jumpy. What's he going to do? Yeah, he's, he's going to be the loose cannon that somehow screws this up. Right. And as they come out of the vault, wait a second, we didn't kill the guards, but they're all dead. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yep. And hey, look at there's a group of jackals who are a group of thieves who steal from other thieves on Purge Night. Yeah. Like you couldn't even come up with your own shit. There no. is so much stuff that can happen and you're not even doing your own thing. Yeah, of course not. And of course, the, the leader's like, hey, thanks for cracking the safe for me, but I want the money. And our little loose cannon is like, no, this is ours. We worked for it. It's like, dude, shut up. So leave in the bag. Yeah. Our leader, and I say our. Because yeah. we're bank robbers, apparently. Grabs one <laughs> of the jackals, using him as a shield, to get his people back behind, it looked like the teller areas, with both right. glass. Yeah. And the jackal's like, just give me the money, and you guys can live. It's like, mm, no. And it's like, we got five minutes. We got What are we going to do? We're, you know, we got to talk about this. We got to do something. I won't kill you. Of course, that just sounds, yeah, I won't kill you. No, my guys will, right. but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Semantics, right? Um, uh huh. Like that's when they bring in the driver with a gun to his head. It's like, well, yeah, we knew that was gonna go over great for him, right? Yep. And the driver's like, "Sorry, man." And the jackal leader's like, "I bet your guy means more to you than my guys do to me." And at that point, I figured the other jackals would be like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> like turn their head. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. But apparently, they all know what they're in for. Uh, apparently so. And finally, our leader says, we got 90 seconds left, and we're all going to burn for this. Yeah. It's like, fine. Caught inside. 
give you the bag. So he gives them a bag, but when they open it, hey, flash bomb. Yay. So we at least get to get our driver and get out. And it's like, what, 30 seconds left, a minute at that point? And our loose cannon Tommy is like, oh, wait, we have to get the other bag because they were trying to take their driver who was hurt. No man left behind. Right. And Tommy, but left the bag of money. Right. So Tommy runs back in and he's like, you hear the siren start, which is at the 30 second mark. So right. I got time. I can do this. I got to do this. And he's running because, yeah, I'm guessing that bag's pretty heavy. And he gets out. And he's like, oh, I made it. And the, the leader's like, I don't think you did. Like, no, 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 it's cool. He's like, I don't think so. No. We had a plan. You can't come with us. <laughs> yeah, we had a plan. You didn't listen. So he looks at the other ones and he's like, was it uh, Burn Protocol 13 yeah. or something? And Tommy's like, oh, we're going to meet up later, right? Yeah, well, we hope so. <laughs> As our female safe cracker takes the driver to the hospital. Yeah. You just see the leader kind of wander off with a bag. But Tommy's just standing there with his bag. Yeah. Why are you just standing there? Hearing sirens. So uh, you might want to make yourself uh, scarce there, buddy. It's like, I think he knows he didn't quite make it. Yeah, that they're already on him. Yeah. So interesting, because apparently this is a major infraction. Oh, yeah. Which we find out in a little bit as we go to the NFFA Surveillance Center. And I didn't catch it. I'm glad you caught it, that it was New Orleans, District 2. Yep. I didn't understand why they were starting their shift in the little egg chairs with weird yeah. red lighting, <laughs> like mood lighting. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's like... You gotta. Well, they want everybody calm before they have to finish the last two hours of insanity. Yeah. I love that they're like, your shift is beginning. It's like, okay. <laughs> you know, it's like the elevators, the old department stores. Yeah. Furniture. Floor five. <laughs> like, this is not <laughs> calm. But we have the boss. Welcome, 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 everyone, to the final purge night shift. It's like, really? Yeah, he was just, I love Connor Trenier, but boy, was he just a little too happy. <laughs> right? And he warns them, oh, the last few hours can get pretty hectic. We got to be on our toes. And that's when we start meeting some of our interesting people in the surveillance area. Yes. We have one woman who notices a guy seems rather concerned with his bag, not with everything going on around him. Right. And they're able to kind of go back, track him through all the cameras, and we see a closer look. And there's a bomb in it. And of course, that's the... Class five, not allowed type of weapon. Yep. She's like, well, if he doesn't die, he's going to go away. Yeah, he's going to die. <laughs> and her boss is like, oh, good work. Okay. This just seems so weird. Like, not the kind of conversation I'm thinking you would normally have with the coworker. Ah, oh, good job. You found the bomb. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he'll die for that. Yeah, good job. Okay. Anyway. Uh, we have the other worker who wonders why the guard would break the rules. And this is the new girl. Yeah, she just was transferred in. From District 7, wherever that is. Yeah. So this is her first purge night working surveillance. So she's not used to this sort of thing. But why would he break the rules? And, of course, our other lady says, it's only important to catch him. Don't worry about it. Yeah. We're not to ask why, just do our jobs. Right. And the new girl. And she seems to be really NFFA saved us from all this. Right. Because the it new wasn't girl's for like, them, this is, why do people do this? would happen every night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's like, oh, I've seen it. It's like, really? I don't think anything was going like this, even in total crap world right now. Right. I guess it's not too far off, but I don't feel like this is happening as often but yeah i guess if you put everything together in a what 12 hour period you would yeah. see the total insanity our new girl's like um yeah what's the protocol for a level 10 person being stressed and the woman's like uh well you verify she, that person's level 10 and then you call it upstairs those are yeah. for our not supposed big to wins. be those are important people right. yeah no nope. sorry you wanted this, you're all in. That's how I look at it. Yeah. And then, then we, we get see. one for the guy. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. One of the guys just losing it. It's like, oh, okay. Somebody's getting axed on his screen, and he's just like, bleh. And our... Esme, yeah. Thank you. I was like, what's her name? She grabs her Vicks that she has on her desk and swipes them under her nose, gives it to the new girl. Hey, it'll cover up the scent until they clean it up. Gross. <laughs> Yeah. And you see the boss taking that guy away like, no, oh, it's okay. Not everybody can. You did it again. <laughs> Second year in a row. Oh, Come on, guy. <laughs> I didn't catch that. Yeah. Oh, that's gross. But the new girl asks Esme to look at something for her. So she wanders over and looks and she's like, oh, that's just a weird looking weapon. It's totally legal. But what sector is that? Sector three. Pretty quiet. Until... We see a woman who is pounding on a very small porch. And as Esme asks the new girl to zoom in, she's like, wait a second, I know her. That woman helped me out of a very dark place and I totally owe her. Hey, send me that link. And Esme's like, she would never be outside on purpose. She hates this holiday. And of course you see that she wants to help her, but right. oh, that's probably not going to happen. No. So now what? 36 minutes left to the end of Purge. And the IT guys are watching what's happening at the bank, and they're making a bet on which group's going to win. Great, guys. Good job. And you have Esme yeah. at her station watching her friend try to avoid a group when she just manages to do it. Barely. And the new girl's like, hey, want to get some coffee? It's like, no. Esme's watching, and she gets away, her friend. She's like, oh, sigh of relief. Yeah. And the new girl's looking at her slightly confused, I'll say. Yeah. She's like, well, yeah, we're not supposed to really care about everything. Even though Esme <laughs> has said she has worked every purge night since they've done this. Right. It's like, oh, that's a yeah. lot. Yeah, that's going to be seared into your brain forever. And at 22 minute mark, we have Esme seeing her friend being surrounded and she puts in her headphones. Now... I couldn't quite make out what the guy was saying. Right. But it's something about, like, where is it? Yeah, where's the file? Okay. And I'm like, uh-oh, this is really not yeah. good. And no, not good at all. And when she doesn't give anything up, eh, they shoot her. And Esme's, yeah. like, freaking out. Because she just kept watching the video over and over and over and over and over and over and over. It's like, okay, obsessive compulsive. But her coworker's like, should you be watching that that much? Yeah. <laughs> we still got work to do here. Right. And Esme's like, something's off. They were asking for a file. And, of course, the new girl, is it illegal? Can we create a case? And at this point, I think Esme real realizes, like, oh, crap. I might be obsessing on this, and this girl could turn me in, and this could be right. bad for me. So she's like, no, no, it's not. You're right. Oh, I can really use that coffee now. So the girl goes to get the coffee for her, and when she does that, Esme grabs a jump drive and makes a copy of the video, but turns everything off on the screen so nobody knows what she's doing. Now, right. just kind of like who watches the watchers, I don't believe nobody's paying attention. Oh, I totally agree with you. And we see that at the end. Yeah, so I feel like it was a big setup. Oh, yeah. But we'll, I'm sure we'll find out something. So we hear the boss announcing, time for the sirens, cue it up. And reminder, anything that happens after the sirens can be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. So he asks Esme, because we, we go back to the bank robbery, hey, I need your professional opinion. That's when we see Tommy, our yeah. wild card. He did not have his foot fully outside the bank. Yep, one foot out, one foot still on the bank property. Um, dude. Why was he dragging his foot is what I'm trying <laughs> to figure out. Like, he was fine, and then suddenly he's, like, weirdly dragging his foot. And it's like, ah, nope, photo finish. Because she's yep. kind of going back and forth. Siren footage, siren footage. Nope. And that... And why didn't the boss make the call? I, I didn't understand that, why he couldn't make the call. He asked for her to do it. I guess he might be new to the district, and she's been there forever, so you know maybe he just defers to her judgment. Or maybe this like, oh, this kind of call is good for you. You know, why don't you make this call? Right. 
And, well, Esme files that as a major felony and calls for liquidation protocol. Yeah, you don't get tried, you don't get judged, you get liquidated. Crap. Bye, Tommy. Right? So Esme... A little pile of goo. Right. Esme gets up and she's like, all right. And she's looking around. Now, you'd think she would have just kind of, as she was walking back from her desk from that... Right. Like, Snagged it, it on the way. But no, mm-hmm. she like went to sit back down, then goes back and grabs it as she's like looking around, looking totally guilty. Like oh, she could have totally played it off. Like yeah. stood there with her hand on where where the jump drive was and been like, you know, IT guys, had you been doing what you're supposed to do, you know, you would have seen this, blah blah blah. And then they would have been right. looking guilty at each other and she could have just like zip right in her hand. But it was like, come on. <laughs> and that's like you said when we see the surveillance camera on the ceiling. Yeah. So they've got that on tape. Yep. So, so she's going to be running from the NFAA before this is over with, too. Probably, because I'm guessing those people were probably NFFA. Yeah. All right. So we have our young couple, Marcus and Michelle. They're in an upscale neighborhood and lying in bed. I don't know how they were even going to try to sleep during this. Right. Because I wouldn't. And Michael's like, uh, yeah, this night makes me realize how crazy everything is. And Michelle's like, it makes me realize how important everything is. And he's like, you want a baby? She's like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> yeah, hold on a minute. <laughs> like, that oh, no. wouldn't make things even worse on this kind of night, because I would be right. freaking out. Ten times worse than I already am. Right. What kind of idiot do you take me for? And she asks him what he did with his former family. And I didn't understand if he... When he's explaining this, if he meant like when he was younger or was he married before? Did he have I a think kid? he was married before. Okay. That's why I took it was. Okay. The, yeah, he had. yeah, I thought it was kind of like, what? Kind of weird. But he's like, well, I stood by the door with a shotgun. It's like, yeah, that's kind of weird. And he's like, a uh, different zip code. And I like this zip code much better. <laughs> or area code. Right. And then we get a little adult time. Because apparently we always have to have adult time. But yeah. Marcus apparently nodded off because he wakes up and it's 543. And he calls out for Michelle. And all of a sudden the window shutters start to rise. It's like, oh God, our security protocols are not staying in place. We still got an hour and 17 minutes. This is not good. Yeah, no. <laughs> and you go, could it be the same security company that... Uh our fruitcake from last this oh, I didn't season even think of worked that. for. That was my first thought was, oh, come on, not another one. Well, I mean, <laughs> can you really trust the security? No, I don't think you could trust anybody. <laughs> so he jumps out of bed, grabs his handgun, and he starts looking around, and he hears a noise in the kitchen. And she, he finds Michelle crouched down, and she's like, I think someone's in the house. And they decide to make a run for it. It's like, Where are you running to? <laughs> exactly. So they run, and then there's gunfire, and they strike Marcus in the arm, I believe. Right, just to graze. Yeah. And so as they're standing there with the locked door, I'm sorry, really? Whatever. So the door is locked, and you see the handle turn. So Marcus shoots through the door, and, oh, I think I got him. But I don't know. So we have right. to try to get him outside. He puts Michelle in the closet. He's like, you need to redo the barricade as soon as I get outside and I get him out. And she's like, "Reset." what? (laughs) Yeah. You can't get back in if I do that. That's the whole point. (laughs) But then he can't either. It's like, I feel like this is bad. Yeah. So he smears some blood on the glass doors and hoping that the guy will follow but he didn't follow right away, so Marcus has to make some noise outside like he's hurt so the guy would follow him. Yep. And as soon as he does, Michelle lowers the barricades. Now, I feel like, and again, maybe it was just me, maybe Marcus could have like made the noise, kind of run around to one of the other doors and got in. Right. How big is this place? Yeah, it wasn't that big. Right. And then we see, especially... Well, of course, I guess it's only, you know, he, he went out, well, yeah, he probably had to go out the, the master bedroom sliding glass door. Yeah, it shouldn't have been that hard to get to the front door. Especially because this guy seems to be walking really slow. 
Yeah. He was doing like the Jason walk. Yeah. You know, he's coming <laughs> for you, but I'm just going to chill out. Because he runs to the neighbor's front porch and we just see like the camera view. You know, he's like, somebody's right. trying to kill me. Let me in. And nobody's answering because they don't know if you're trying to kill him too. Sorry. Yep. So Marcus heads towards a car that seems to have hit a tree and he sees a body on the ground. It's like, ah, crap. And suddenly there's a bright light and gunshots and you hear, oh, I'm just trying to make sure he's dead. It's like, yeah. oh, crap. This isn't good. Yeah. You're not getting in that car. No. <laughs> because he's hiding behind the tree, and we see the shots coming from the balcony across the street. Well, I think you are SOL, my friend. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got a neighbor that's going to shoot anything that moves and somebody that's after you. Right. You in a deep <laughs> world of hurt there, Marcus. And we see, I think it was like a Trans Am. Yeah, gold, it was. I believe. Yep. <laughs> coming down the street, and you hear the guys... Oh, he's coming in hot. And so there's suddenly like gunfire in this exchange with the guy in the Trans Am. The guy's up on the balcony and gives Marcus a chance to get into the car. Well, there's a dead guy in the car. So he has to like pull the guy out and lay him on the ground. And I'm thinking, all right, if these guys sweep again, aren't they going to notice that there's two bodies all of a sudden? Right. You would think. Well, he gets the guy out, gets in the car, manages to close it quietly enough that they don't notice apparently because of all the gunfire right but the car won't start of course not. why why won't it start i don't get probably because it got damaged by hitting the tree didn't look like it hit it that hard well yeah i didn't completely crush the front end in but it might have been a hard enough to do some damage that would keep the car from starting yeah or they managed to shoot part of the engine block i don't know that could be possible, too. Well, the guy in the Trans Am ends up getting shot. So, well, that's not helping. And when Marcus looks, he sees the guy who's coming out of his house doing the slow walk. So he crawls into the back seat to try to hide. And I'm thinking, come on, guys. You've been shining that damn light everywhere. Right. Why aren't you hitting it now? Right. And the guy's getting closer, and he stops and kind of shines a little flashlight at the car. So Marcus jumps and hits the horn, which causes the guys on the balcony to whip around and fire shots. I put those together. I'm getting yeah. so excited. At the guy who was walking. But why, may I ask, did they not also shoot at the car? Because obviously somebody's alive in there. Right. I don't know. <laughs> It's like, were you so excited that you seen somebody walking that you had to shoot them and then you forgot? But whatever, the guy's down. Great. This is helpful for Marcus because then the sirens go off and the neighbors are like, okay, purge is over. It's like, what? Because yeah. Marcus gets out of the car and he sees the guys breaking down their equipment like, no big deal. La 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 la. Yep. Another purge night's over. Yeah. See one lady looking at her dead husband in the yard. And Right. Other people dragging stuff to the trash can <laughs> like a, a normal day is like, ugh. Uh, and I, I did write, like, you're definitely looking at your neighbors differently after this because he sees, like, a carload of them get out. They have blood. They have the masks on. And they're going in their house. Now, yeah. The, only thing the whole at, family. Yeah. The only thing missing <laughs> at that point was them to be like, hey, neighbor. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I expected to hear that. Yeah, I really did. But... They go back because they're trying to figure out who this guy was following him because Marcus did notice that the guy had a bunch of scars on his hand. And the body is gone, but the other bodies are all there. Right. So what the hell? But the guy's phone was there and it had a bunch of pictures of Marcus doing his everyday thing. Right. So this wasn't some weird random attack. This was definitely no. him being targeted. Oh, yeah. Why? You in deep trouble, Marcus. Right? No clue why, but I bet it's something. <laughs> now we get to our last poor unfortunate soul of the night. Yeah. Yeah. We have two guys exiting a frat house. Big yeah. surprise. And Ben, who says, we shouldn't be out here. And the other guy goes, but the scavenger hunts adult or tradition. We just need to go take a picture over at the suicide bridge. No big deal. It's yeah, not disrespectful. What? They're already dead. It's like, really? <laughs> guy's like, don't make me go by myself. Whiny, whiny, whiny. And then he's like, yeah. oh, look at these girls. Who turn, and thankfully Ben 
pulled him back because they would have probably been on his friend in not a good way at all. Uh, yeah. And they have like, what was it? It was like a saw blade on like various body parts. Yeah. And it, it just like, dude, they're going to take you out. Yeah. The four of them. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> you two would have been toast. French toast. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, great. They make it over to the bridge only to realize it really is a suicide bridge because there's several people hanging. It's like some of them are covered in blood, too. So I'm wondering if they purged and then they cleansed themselves. Right. And Ben's like, could be or they could be killers that want to make people think that it's suicide bridge and take their victims and hang them over the bridge. See, I was thinking, too, like they kept focusing on the one girl. That right. the buddy says, hey, that looks like your girlfriend, Kellen. Girlfriend, yeah. First of all, <laughs> the hell is wrong with you? Exactly. Second, I'm like, oh, is it really his girlfriend? And then third, I'm like, the way they're focusing on her, is she, like, not actually hanging Dead, there? Dead, right. <laughs> is she somehow, like, propped up there where she's going to jump down and get somebody? That's right. what I was really thinking. Like, oh, it wouldn't surprise. It wouldn't have surprised me if that would have what been happened. What have happened? It just, if all those yeah. people hanging there just drop down all of a sudden, ah, oh, you're toast now, buddy. Yeah, they were just focusing on that girl, and I really thought it was going to be her. Like she was going to jump down and like do attack them or something. But Ben's like, I had enough. Back to the frat house. And of course, the guy snaps a picture and runs to catch up. So as they're heading back, though. Ben hears a woman yelling for help, and I'm thinking, again, set up. Yeah, trap, trap. So Ben looks in, and he sees a woman tied up, and she's like, please help me. So he steps forward and gets caught in a trap. It looks like almost like a rabbit trap, like the way it snatches him up, and he drags him in the room. Right. And the gate closes behind him, and his friend is a piece of shit, is all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. Because he is no help uh, and no. runs off. Because Ben gets the rope out from around his feet and he's at the door and his friend's like, I can't open it. And they see a dude come out who has a mask on and a cattle prod and who pulls out a knife. And Ben's friend is like, sorry, dude, gotta go. What? Yep. <laughs> I. Some friend you are. You're on my purge list for next year. Right? I'm like, oh, you're so dead. Yep. I'm like, the only thing better would have been, like, he got caught before he got two steps or something, you know? Yeah. So the guy walks up and just stabs the girl, like, right in the stomach. Yeah. And then walks over slowly to Ben. Hello, run, climb, do something. Do something. <laughs> there was a lot of stuff in that place that you could have used as a weapon. Right. And he ends up getting shocked. And he's. You know, when he comes to, as the guy's like, I'm not going to hurt you. Maybe I am. He's like, take off your shirt. Take off your pants. Okay. This is getting creepy. Yeah. And he has been laid down. And it's like, oh, he's going to be sexually assaulted. Yeah. Because you see the guy, like, taking off his belt and just creepily saying, oh, so soft. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, apparently, the... not good. Because this dude was no. not prepared because Ben grabs a knife that was in the girl's stomach and stabs the guy. And the guy's like, I wasn't really going to do it. Yeah, of course not. Because you didn't right. just kill this girl. So yeah, definitely didn't think you were going to do anything. Yeah. And then Ben stabs him again and again and again and again and again. <laughs> and again. Repeatedly yeah. as he's screaming and then the sirens go off and Ben stops and he takes the mask off the guy. And why did it look like the dude that just left him there? <laughs> it did, kind of. Maybe it was his brother. I definitely got the feeling that Ben knew this person. I mean, he, he looked very close to the same age. He had the, the preppy type of haircut. So like I figured it probably guy? was somebody in the college or the frat house. Oh, God. That was yeah. messed up. But Ben grabs the keys off the guy's belt. And unlocks the door. So, okay, those were our setups. Where are we going next? Is what's gonna ha what's gonna happen? Right. And oh my god, it was good. I really liked the way this they played this one. 
Oh, I did too. It was like I'm really looking forward to this event series. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you, whether they I call like, it season two or not, right. I, I do like this better than the movies because it's showing a bunch of different people. And right, at least last time it all came together. Right. So now we, yeah, how these four of these people are related or connected? Who the hell knows? Yeah, because last <laughs> season. Totally threw me the way they put it together. Like, oh, I yeah, was not absolutely. Expecting it. No, absolutely. So we'll see how this works out. So what do you guys think? Shoot us an email at sci-fi talk at fangirlzone.com and we will reply and read it and all that fun stuff. And if you can rate and review us on iTunes and every other platform you find us on while you're on the interwebs, because good ratings and reviews help other fans of the show find us. Tell your friends who are especially horror fans. Hello, that's time of year. They will love this, especially if they like the movies. They'll like the shows. If they haven't watched season one, hello, it's out there. You can watch the whole thing, and then you can get into this one. And as always, we hope you're enjoying the podcast. So for this episode of Sci-Fi Talk, I am Sean Fangirlas. And I'm Steve. I'm not going to hurt you. Maybe a little. And until next time.